All right, so really quick, um, this is a BMC um, cross machine. It's the CX-1, uh, and it is absolutely amazing. I love it. So cycle cross-wise, a lot of people say, you know, why do you need an extra set of rims or wheels? And the reason being, and I'll let Dave kind of address it even more, is, you know, a lot of the barriers, you'll see guys that will pop those barriers on their bike. What you don't realize in their mind, they're wondering if they're going to actually... I guess what they call burp a flat or they're going to pinch a flat, I guess is what it is. But you can actually, with your roll, you're running these a low pressure and so you can pinch this to where it actually runs out of air. Well, at that point in time, you don't have time to pump it up. So you do what, Dave? You head to the pit yeah. and you grab your awesome second set of wheels Yeah. and you pop them in and then you're, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a slowdown, yeah. but it's nothing like trying to unseat a, a tubeless setup and get a tube Amen. in there or Amen. try and get it to seat again. Um, a lot of times what you'll see at the highest end of cross racing is multiple bikes. Right. And so uh, it, one of the things I suggest to everyone is go out to YouTube and find World Cup cyclocross racing. Right. And you'll see the top of the top guys out there on on cyclocross specific courses, yeah, and they have a they have a pit area, right? And you can pull into the pit. Typically, the way they set it up is there are uh, within a course you can go into the pit twice mm -hmm. within one lap, right? And and so it's kind of a dual side. It's not like in different places. Right. They just route the course so that you pass by the pit right. two different directions, um, and. You can come in, switch bikes, your professional mechanics take it, right. and in the 10 minutes that it takes to do a lap, yeah. they've replaced parts, they've cleaned it yeah, up, exactly. it looks like it's brand new, fresh, right. ready to rip. Yeah. Uh, not everyone has that luxury, right. uh, but it, it makes um, the top level racing really exciting. It, does, it, does. it, it comes down to the, to the racer, right. not the equipment. Yeah. And so it, it's a lot of fun to see those head-to-head -head battles and not right. have equipment be the failure point, right. hopefully. Um, but you know, if you're if you're out there privateering your own racing, yeah, uh, a second set of wheels is a really efficient way to do it. Um, you don't have to like buy the best of the best. Right. It it helps because quality equipment is going to sure. do the trick for you, but. If you've got that beater set of wheels and it's sitting in the pit and you take a goat head yeah. and there's no fixing it, or you know, if you're running a tubeless setup and you, you burp the air because yeah. as Bart mentioned, you want to run low pressure so that you've got good traction yeah. um, in, in a variety of terrain because you'll be on pavement, you'll be on grass, you'll yep. be in dirt, you'll be in mud. And yep. so you want those tires to grab. Yep. Um, and, and so you risk the chance of burping airs. Uh, that's if you're running tubeless on a clincher. Uh, a lot of folks run sell-ups, mm -hmm. and so that's a tire that's glued to the rim. Mm -hmm. So you're not fixing it. Right. That You're not fixing it mid-race. Um, you can run sealant. A lot of punctures um, take care of themselves, but you may need some air. Yeah. And so, you know, your pit stop, you change wheels, and you're ready to rip again. Yeah. Um, so while Dave's thinking, the other reason I bought two sets of wheels was strictly because I like to do like Rebecca's Private Idaho, which means it's a longer event. So then it goes back to a more uh, road thought in my head, which is lighter, get the bike down, as minimal as it can be so that I can perform. So I have a real high-end set, have another set, so I can enjoy cycle cross at the same time when I go to a big event like Rebecca's Private Idaho or the Crusher or something to that nature, I've really lightened the bike up a little bit more and I have another set of wheels. Yeah, so. that can be a huge factor um, because a lot of these gravel races, they're, yeah. they're throwing in severe climbs. Yeah, they are. And so you want lightweight, you want torsional stiffness right. in, your, in your wheels and that can, that can play a, a huge factor. Um, I was just trying to think of some different applications uh, from a wheel perspective. Well, wheel-wise, I can tell you another thing you can see here on this set. So uh, these, this wheel is a Continental, 
this is a racing Ralph uh, Schwabe. Now, what happens is in cross is when you show up, conditions can change really quick. Therefore, two sets of wheels makes it really important when you get there because a lot of times you don't have time to be changing rubber right before an event. Now, they do if you've got time to hand a set of wheels when you get there to somebody, but you got to be warming up, you got to get going. So you'll see that there's two sets, two different total uh, wheels on this. Uh, I mean rubber, I should say, I don't know, however you want to call it. Uh, tires, I guess is what I should call them. And then that way you have the right set of uh, tread pattern for the condition that you want. And, and that's always talked about when you get there, just like air pressure is. You know, what kind of air pressure are you going to run today? Everybody says that. And then, you know, what tire is going to be ideal for this For the conditions, setup. yeah. yeah. If you've so, got a dry, grassy race, right, exactly. then you don't want a lot of tread. Right. Uh, but if you've got some tacky or mud, right. you're, you, you know, for tacky, you're going to want something like this. Right. And it's going to have really good grip. For right. mud, you're going to want something that has a little bit more, more space open. between yep. the knobs, so exactly. that it, th so that the mud's not collecting here. Right. Uh, and and having a dual set. Right. You can have the rubber already set up because, as right. we talked about, it is not simple to set no. bead on no, some of not. these tubeless setups. No, it's not. And if you're running tubulars, you you don't change a tire. Yeah. So when you get there, it just gives you a little more of an advantage of being set up, ready to get out there and do something. So we just wanted to give you a little segment on that for you. So cyclocross, uh, gravel racing, it's kind of the, I wouldn't say it's a trending thing, but it is. It's kind of a growing, uh, really a lot, a lot of people fun, fun with, with it. it. it yeah, there, it breaks up your riding. There's huge challenges. Yeah. Like uh, they're, well, they're, new always, terrain. they're always big miles. Yeah. And they're putting you into terrain that you may not go ride yeah. otherwise. Right. Because you know, a lot of these, you could ride a mountain bike. You yeah. could potentially ride a road bike. Right. You could ride a cross bike. Right. And, and for example, like with the Crusher, yeah. you choose. Yeah. And, and one of the taglines from the promoter is that uh, you're going to be unhappy at some time with <laughs> Either your one. bike choice. That's right. And, and so there's no perfect bike for these events and it's creating like this new type of challenge yeah, it's fun. for people to figure out. Yeah. And, and I think it's created a fun environment to racing and, yeah. and Grand Fondo style riding. Yeah, I agree. It, it's, it's a lot of fun to see it. Get out there, try out one of these new BMCs, go out and have some fun and uh, let us know how you like your events. Once again, check out Plan 7 Coaching so you can have an amazing event this year and I'll let Dave be a part of that. Uh, you can look at my Leadville results and what he did for me, so absolutely love that. So if you have any comments, make sure you make them below. Other than that, get out there, ride your bike, and have fun.